I work for a company called Europower Hydraulics, which is the company originally that set HydroScan up in Sweden. Uh, they were very good friends with Bjorn Armstrong, the owner, and Europower many years ago set Bjorn up in, in, in this industry. Now it was relatively new, I mean there was only, there was Gloucester which was the original depot. These depots were purchased from Europower Hydraulics because they was going through different changes, so they decided to sell the depot network off. I had a, a really, really, really large OEM, uh, it was spending one and a half to two million pounds a year. That's the only reason that Europower kept the Nottingham depot but I was finding it increasingly harder to, to supply it with product. I was spending thousands of pounds elsewhere with other companies just to keep it going. But as everybody knows, you can't stop a production line at an OEM. So, and that was just a um, conversation with Bob one day, and he said, you know, would you fancy a new challenge if we, we want to set another depot up in the UK? And I said, yes, I think I would. Oh, it was an opener when I started, absolute opener is you get a massive shock learning curve because you don't realise how much goes on with all hosing products. Well, we work as a distressed panic situation most of the time because people only come in and use us when they're in trouble. We are the ER of the hydraulic world. So uh, Lee Davis, the manager of Bobmin, was our first mobile fitter and he started, the van went out on his first job the week I started, so uh, October 2009. We decided to get a O2 plate transit van um, and we kitted it out ourselves, me and Martin in the depot with Rob, um, yeah, did, got the welder out and started welding up some frameage and stuff like that and put all the tools and that in and um, I think Rob took me out once and I did a job and that was it, I was off off and running so it was the first van that went off and it just grew from there basically so it makes you quite proud I suppose to be the first one to start it all off. We set up uh, the, you know, the, the Hydroscan third depot, which, which was Nottingham. Uh, fortunately, this, this OEM came with us, so you know it started off with one and a half to two million pounds worth of business. Uh, fortunately, a few years later, the uh, business got bought, and they bought a similar business in Ireland. And it was a case of which one do we keep open. Unfortunately, they closed the UK and kept it open in Ireland, which meant then um, two million pounds out of out, out the UK's business was a massive, massive, massive loss. But you know, I, I say thanks to the group, but thanks to, to, to Bjorn Holmstrom. He's the one, one that ultimately made the decision. He came to the UK and said, we're going to open a central warehouse. So again, it was a different direction to go into. And, you know, and we'll start again from scratch and we'll rebuild the business. And that's exactly what's happened. We lost the account. We set up two depots in Nottingham, one in San Diego and one in Colic. Uh, we split the other business that we had, the small amount that we had. Uh, we put new people in. I mean, Aaron Goffing was was a guy that I'd just bought off the shop floor and he was starting to learn the business a little bit more. We made him branch manager, which was a massive step for him. He had a number two in, in Jason Byrne, who again was very, very new to the business. And, you know, I've got to give them the credit. They, they determination that they had and they, they took it to another level, to be fair to them. My dad used to own a, a pub. Nigel was one of the locals. We used to play in the same darts team. So when my dad left the pub, um, he, was, he didn't work for a while. But then Nigel asked him if he would come to Hydroscan and, and do bits and bobs. Um, he got the same impression of the company as me and is still here now. And then probably three months after my dad started, I was asked to come and help out. And then I got the Hydroscan bug as well. We moved premises and moved to here, um, I became branch manager so it was a sort of a new area. It was growing, it was getting more professional um, and more ambitious. Rebecca coming into the business has, has, has made a massive difference uh, and it 
to be fair, it was fairly immediate as well. She's put certain things in place. She's concentrated on sales a lot more. Social media has been a massive thing that we, we just haven't done before, getting the iDescan brand name out there. And she's been, you know, very largely responsible for that. I read the brief and I remember sitting at the kitchen table at home and saying to Chris, I really want this job. Um, and then, you know, uh, a very thorough interview process later when I was actually offered the job. I couldn't believe it really. Um, I was very excited to come and, uh, come and work here. Everyone has the, the same goals and the same ideas and everyone is willing to help everyone else. Uh, and the group is very good at creating opportunities for us to collaborate. Lack of ego and, and willingness to support each other genuinely exists amongst all of the team across all of the countries is why it's a really good place to work. The ethics and the reputation that they'd actually built over the years was and the integrity that the company had. And it was it was really obvious one of the, you know one of their top priorities was the people, was the staff that worked for them. And that was evident from, from day one. And I think that's continued and I think it continues through most Iron Scan countries and it certainly continues through the UK. And I've I can't have nothing but praise for the way that the Hydroscan UK and the Hydroscan Group treat its employees. I saw it as a good opportunity immediately, but at the time I'd actually got three offers on various places. The big swing for me was that the Group Finance Director flew over especially, actually from South Africa he'd been before, to interview me here. and that made me think, okay, they want me, but two, if the company's going to be doing things like this as a large business, it's, it, it makes you feel of a, of a, uh, of a, of a, of a bigger presence and, and, a, and, a, and a more, as I say, homely feel, I guess, when you've got you know, a guy coming over, who's a Swedish guy coming over from uh, South Africa purely to interview me, and he flew back the next day. So that is, if you're looking at what is a clincher on a deal, I guess, looking back, that was probably it. There's not many companies who I've worked with, if, if any, where I can feel as though I'm in a small company because I know everybody in it uh, and, and what they do and, and, and their, their families and everything else that goes with it, but also we are, we are a lot larger organisation. As much as we're a large international company, it's a very small company on the way it works. Um, everyone knows everyone, everyone talks to each other, and we look after each other like a family. Yeah, March the 23rd, 2020, and uh, pandemic hit, hit for real. The coronavirus is the biggest threat this country has faced for decades. We were, you know, starting to put people on furlough. We were, you know, a lot of us working from home. Mobile vans were still working seven days a week. You know, there was industry still working and we were there seven days a week to try and keep these, the, the, these vehicles moving and keep them going. Having been with the business in the MD role for maybe six months and started to make some plans about, you know, how we were going to build the business going forwards, um, then there was a global pandemic. My biggest challenge then was making sure that everybody was safe. You know, we had to keep the business running uh, because we were supporting the key industries. Um, but yeah, juggling you know, people's worry and fear and making the right choices about whether to put people on furlough, whether not to put people on furlough and balancing. It's just a lot of emotion and a lot of concern from people because uh, the people who were in, some of them didn't want to be and the people who were at home, some of them were desperate to come back to work. Um, so trying to balance all of that and keep the business going and every day then it was tiring because every day you had to learn what's the legislation today, what are the rules today. Uh, um, so yeah that was that was certainly an experience that, that none of us has had had, had before um, and a, a test of leadership I'm sure for everybody. It was a very heavy male orientated industry which um, you know I think I think Hydroscan obviously particularly Rebecca I've spoken to her a few times she's very keen to try and get a lot more equality as in the number of employees that are females compared to male um, so it's something that we're you know 
trying to strive towards is and trying to bring on people you know whether it be apprentices or anything like that so to bring them up through the ranks and hopefully give them a good career with hydroscan so straight from school because i didn't do me last year at all because of covid either and it was straight into working with like grown men i didn't know what to expect there's not a lot of like hands-on people you don't learn hands-on anymore they want it all online or all through books here it's you're straight into it it's it's laid out in front of you this is how you do it this is the way this is the best way to learn it. And I've been supported for it all. I've, I had a point where my college course nearly shut down and it was still there, I was still working. I was still being put on courses, nothing ever changed. It was still, I oh, will put you on this course, we can push you for this, you can get this qualification. Like they're there to help build me, I can feel it. I've spoken down upon in a lot of places. Here it's you've been spoken to and worked with, not working under someone. You're a team with it, it's always a team effort. Here. I've worked for a lot of companies over the years in warehousing and it was the feeling as soon as I walked through the door that everybody made me feel welcome and everybody um, would go out of the way to say, are you okay? It's the personal touch I feel within the team here and the management that, that makes it a pleasure to come to work every day. So much to do, so many exciting opportunities. We're halfway through a journey um, and I'm, you know, definitely want to see where we're going to get to. It's served me well for 16 years and I have to be honest I think it's a fantastic company to work for and I tell anybody the same thing and thank you very much.